Okay, so um, there's a variety of works here. This is an example of a book cover illustration. So some of my more commissioned work as a, as a freelance illustrator. Um, it's uh, the novels by a friend of mine, Marco Lanigan, a very well-known fantasy writer in Australia. And uh, it's a very strange story, partly about a girl falling in love with a, a bear. It's a bit more complicated than that. But um, the image for me um, is an interesting one that I came up with because it's it's, it's somewhat unexpected. Um, I think the most interesting part is the, the, the wounds on, on the woman. Um, to give a sense that there's some, there's some love there, that there's something very unsettling about the image. And, uh, you know, a great opportunity to paint in a, in a realistic, you know, um, style. Actually looking uh, quite a lot at um, Arthur Rackham illustrations. And you can sort of see that in the background the foliage. Um, with the sketch for it, where a lot of the real energy is nailed down to the page. Um, similarly, here, this is a drawing done on location, so sitting in a, a field um, in the middle of rural Australia, just drawing a clump of trees, and the act of just randomly choosing a subject actually helps me to appreciate it more. So it's, it's a form of study, and uh, at the end of it you, you have a drawing, but ultimately the purpose is to examine ordinary things and try and find something, uh, some sort of language in the shapes. In this case, seeing the tree as a singular mass of um, almost a cavernous form, like a Henry Moore sculpture or something, which is how it looked to me on the day. And a lot of this sort of work ends up breathing life into the studio work because uh, when you're working as an illustrator, you, you don't have reference to things necessarily outside of your window and uh, there's a tendency to um, just draw out of your head all the time, which I think is actually quite a dangerous thing. Um, you end up repeating the same shapes over and over again. So I'll often go out in between doing illustration work, do some sketching to remind myself of the kind of forms that exist in nature and uh, almost to practice my visual language skills. Take all that back to the studio where I can focus you know, in that little cone of light. Um, and, and then I'm able to do work such as this without reference to much, um, but just drawing on years of experience of drawing trees and, you know, roots and rocks and all sorts of things like that. Um, natural forms are always the most difficult. Um, so here we can see drawings that are more kind of concept work in trying to construct narrative, uh, less interested in, in form, and, and shape and stylistic elements and more just looking at content uh, as a, through a series of sequential drawings and uh, this is a typical process of mine. It's kind of nice to see because the drawings are so clumsy and um, I like looking at these really sketchy awkward drawings because there's so much life in them. Um, hopefully some of that continues into the final artwork but uh, you know the, the real sort of crucible of creation happens in these um, you know, crappy little biro drawings on, on bits of copy paper. Um, then there's little studies such as this tiny sunset, um, which I, I kind of do for fun really, and uh, sometimes these lead into bigger projects, um, so it's like fishing for, for something that, that will hook uh, an idea. Um, and then there is this, another drawing from a field, actually the same place as the previous sketch of trees, um, looking here at the the way that the, the farmed land has been uh, divided into these organic sections that I found very interesting um, and just really, um, even now I find just very attractive to look at the sort of compressed organic forms kind of pressing up against each other, a few cows and, and things just scattered through the landscape. Um, so here, um, some uh, now quite valuable artwork. <laughs> Not so much at the time I was doing it. Um, this is going back about 11 or 12 years uh, to the first picture book that I wrote and illustrated. Um, up to that point I'd been illustrating a lot of other people's work and really wanted to write my own and conceive my, my own book um, and write something that was very funny. And this was the story that resulted. Uh, it's, 
I guess it's interesting, a lot of people ask me about uh, to what extent I use digital imagery to construct page layouts and uh, here you can see that pretty much what's on the painting is what, is what appears in the book, making it very difficult for translators. Um, but also I didn't have a computer in those days so I kind of learnt the craft of illustration without the convenience of technology and uh, I think that's actually helped me to refine my traditional skills. And there's a little sketch um, which relates directly to um, this. So this was would have been traced directly onto the painting and then painted in. Okay, so um, another sketch sitting in a, a field, careful to avoid cow pats. Um, and this was the last ray of light um, coming in. Uh, on that day, and I was really trying to capture that that blinding green greenness that that you get in the field, and and, and these these poplars, which were so kind of like fire shooting up. Um, you have to work really fast, which is why I use pastel crowns to try and capture that. Um, some random sketches, and these these often start with as scribbles, almost finding shapes in clouds, and just letting my imagination cling to them to develop ideas. Um, you know, and again, sometimes these develop into stories and sometimes they're nice, it's just singular illustrations. Um, and then, you know, adding a title can be quite critical to some of these drawings. It sort of gives them a, a different uh, feeling and meaning. Um, and these are some drawings for um, a project that never really developed, um, and a lot of my work is like that. It's preparatory work for projects that never quite come to fruition for whatever reason. Um, and it was the idea of, of, of these pets that are made out of um, recycled household objects, um, just pulled apart and sort of stitched back together. Um, and that, uh, well, the basic idea was that you could, you could animate any object by just putting something of value inside its head. Um, as long as it's well constructed and it can walk, then it will, it will follow you everywhere and be your friend for life. Um, and so I still like the idea and I may develop it one day, but for the moment um, these were a series of, uh, I guess, basically concept drawings to see if the, the shapes and forms triggered any narrative. Um, I mean, this is quite an interesting sketch because it shows the intermediate stage between first concept and finished drawing where um, it's almost like the technical architecture of, of an illustration uh, that the viewer normally doesn't see and, and probably shouldn't really but in this case it's interesting to note the the, pers the um, diagonals the very even diagonal lines in this particular drawing is very important to the feeling that you get when you look at the um, the, uh, the final illustration because there's a sense of unnatural arrangement and um, that that you you wouldn't necessarily feel if if things were more randomly sketched without that sort of planning that you see there. And um, this is an illustration um, from the same book, Tales from Outer Suburbia. Uh, and you know, you can more of a colour sketch, so trying to capture the mood of that illustration before progressing to the final artwork. Um, and this is quite an interesting technique because it's it's actually using a real cheap ballpoint pen, um, which I find is like a really a great drawing medium and I use it a lot for, for um, my sketching. Um, you can get a very fine line that's, that's uh, not possible with, with other media and trying to make it look a bit, look a bit like a dry point etching in some ways. So that's part of my exhibition. Thank you very much. <laughs>